I'd like to welcome you to the DB2 Linux, Unix, and Windows Advanced Recovery Solutions, a series of discussions. This will be part two on the DB2 Merge Backup. I'm Bert Pondo from IBM, and I'll be hosting this session for you today. The DB2 LUW Advanced Recovery Solutions has one objective, to help you save time and cost, reduce errors, and meet service level agreements. In part one, we covered the DB2 Recovery Expert, but in this part, we will be covering the DB2 Merge Backup product. And finally, in part three, we will talk about the Optum High Performance Unload. Without further ado, let's talk about the DB2 Merge Backup for Linux, Unix, and Windows. So, why would you want Merge Backup for Linux, Unix, and Windows? Well, first of all, you should understand that it's a standalone utility to make your backup scenarios faster and more efficient and more cost effective. How does it do that? Basically, it eliminates the need to take full DB2 backups. In fact, if Merge Backup were a movie, its subtitle would be Merge Backup, Never Take a Full Backup Again. You see, it can take multiple offline database or table space backups and build cumulative single offline database or table space backups from it. Or it can do the same with multiple online database or table space backups and build a cumulative single online database or table space backup. It does this in two modes. The normal mode, where merge backups are on the DB2 server, that is, where the backups were created, and the recovery history file is readily available. The standalone mode, however, allows you to do merge backups on a different server where the backups were not created. That is, they were copied there, and DB2 doesn't even have to be present at all. So, the standalone mode is given so that you could avoid impact your production environment completely. The backup source locations and target locations are any disk, TSM, XBSA, or vendor library. And in fact, your source and target don't even have to be on the same media. The software support level for DB2 merge backup on Linux, Unix, and Windows is DB2.10.1 or DB2.9.7.4 or DB2.9.5.8. For the non-10.1 versions, we need those particular levels in order to support the recovery history file of a new type, type backup M for merge. The OS level support is listed here on HP, AX, Linux, Solaris, and all varieties of Windows. And on these operating systems, this chart here shows the minimum memory and disk space required. As you can see, merge backup is very lightweight. Now in order to describe how Merge Backup works, first I'd like to remind you about the incremental or incremental delta backup scenario for DB2. If you're not using incremental or incremental delta backups, the Merge Backup utility is not useful for you. But perhaps you're not using incremental and incremental delta backups because of the maintenance involved in them. So perhaps Merge Backup can encourage you to begin using them, as you'll see how useful this can be for you. In DB2, we use the keyword incremental and incremental delta to differentiate two different kinds of backups. And here, I just call them incremental and, and then delta. The first one on the top shows a full backup being done on Sunday, and then an incremental being done on Monday, which represents all the changes made since the full backup. When an incremental is done again on Tuesday, that represents all the changes made on Tuesday and Monday together since the full backup was done on Sunday. Incrementals mean basically that, a backup done for all pages that have changed since the last full backup. A restore of incremental backups is always two, the full backup and then whatever incremental backup you want to restore at the point to. So for example, on Friday, you restore the full backup along with the 
Friday incremental backup to get to your restore point. And then you would roll forward in the logs from there. Incremental delta backups, here just called delta, are a little different. If you notice, we take our full on Sunday. The Monday delta backup doesn't look any different than the Monday incremental. But on Tuesday, it is different. On Tuesday, the delta backup only takes the page changes from Monday. So if you're going to restore to Tuesday, you would need Monday and Tuesday along with the full backup on Sunday. So given the above scenario about Friday, you would need Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, and Sunday in order to get a restore point to Friday. So incremental and incremental delta backups are options that customers have of, for DB2 for different reasons. The incremental gives you a quicker restore since you only have two to deal with, but they take up more space since much of the data on the intervening incremental delta backups is redundant. For example, Friday contains everything that Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Monday has. So some choose delta to be very efficient in space storage, but that means the restore point involves more files. So that takes a little bit more time to process. And it requires you to make sure you keep track of all those files and have them all. At some point, whether you use incremental or incremental delta, you're going to have to take a full backup again. After all, you can't keep doing these patterns forever. At some point with incremental, that file could be as big, if not bigger, than the original full. So at some point, if you're taking incremental backups, you're going to want to take a full backup again to level set it. And it's the same thing with deltas. You could keep going on and on and on. But after a year of doing that without a full backup, you'd have 365 deltas along with your original full. That's a lot of files to use to restore your database with. So you would probably want to do a full backup in between that time, say once a week or once a month, whatever your recovery scenario requires. But still, you have to run the full backup using the DB2 engine to do so. And this proves to be a challenge for some customers. And this is where Merge Backup comes into play. So how does it work? Well, first, let's picture the incremental scenario. We would take the full backup, the incremental backup, and Merge Backup would then use the recovery history file to see which ones are the latest and produce a new full Merge Backup using the two files. The DB2 engine is not engaged. It's simply a matter of splicing those two files together, so to speak. In the case of the deltas, it would take the full backup and any number of deltas that are the latest. It would use the recovery history file as well to see what the last delta was, find all the rest of the deltas, find the full, and again, put those files together in a new full merge backup. These now are written to the recovery history file with a new backup type called M. But for all intents and purposes, that merge backup is just like having a full backup. That means you can take the old full merge backup that you just had from your last merge backup process and add your deltas or incrementals, as the case may be, merge them again, and get yet another new full merge backup. So you can do this pretty much indefinitely. The only time you may have to not do this and do a full merge backup using the DB2 engine would be if you were to upgrade your database to a new version. But as long as you're staying on the same version of DB2, you would never have to take a full DB2 backup using the backup command again. This chart tries to show the support of how you can mix and match both online and offline database and table space backups in order to merge them together. And to understand this chart, it's probably best to say what it is not supported because you can take pretty much any combination of backups and produce merge backups from them with one exception. What this chart is saying basically is if you have a full backup at the database level, you can create database or table space. You can use database or table space backups 
in order to create merge backups from that. So you could have a database backup full, use a database incremental or delta, and produce database merge. Or you can have a database full backup, take table space incremental or delta, and end up with table space merge. But what you can't do is start off with a table space full backup and then try to add a database incremental or delta. So these red boxes here are trying to show that one particular combination doesn't work. And that makes sense too. So that is the case if you're starting off with offline merge backups. And the same applies if you're doing online merge backups. So offline or off online, the same exceptions apply. The merge backup command line is very simple. DB2, MBK, a file that gives you the control file information and the database that you're going to merge to. And then a couple of flags. One that says whether you're running in standalone and one that says what you're, whether you're not going to rerunning no execute. No execute is basically a test run without actually doing the merge itself. It's great for syntax checking and to make sure all of your backups are available. There are a few other options, but these are the ones that I would like to focus on here that would be used the most. The control file keyword is very simple. Merge database, database name, and then the output clause. I'm going to give you an example of a couple of merged backup control file uh, clauses here in a second. But think of merge backup as simply a pipe. Files in, one file out. There is a hierarchy of keywords used. The merge backup does have some built-in default options for various features. They can be overridden with a configuration file, db2mbk.config. This controls the behavior of the merge backup in a basic way. If you wanted to override that, you could say so in the control file itself. And if you wanted to override the control file, you can say so at the command lo line that starts the control file. So that's the hierarchy of keyword options used in the merge backup command. The configuration file for merge backup is shown here. This is an example where we're going to say if we don't otherwise indicate the instance that will be uh, merged in is db2 inst2. You could also say what your relative log file path could be or your compression library or even how many CPU processors would be used. So this is just a simple example to show that you can customize merge backup uh, to run different from the defaults. After that, to run the command is simple. db2mbk-f, the control file name. In this case, we call it mbk1 control. And we're going to be merging the sample database and putting the output to backups fall 1 and 2 and compressing. So this line is very simple. If you notice, the merge backup always assumes the latest. It can know whether you're incremental or delta. Find it. Find all the relative files if it's a delta and find the full. Use them all and produce a merge right to the location that you want. Merge backup can be just this simple. If you were using TSM, you could do it with the output use TSM and your sessions shown here. And to show the flexibility, we could even do particular partitions. By default, if you're using a partition database, that is database partition, it will do all the partitions. But you could single out one or a few if you were so inclined, indicated by the syntax here, part one. Here's a control file that shows how you do overriding. So db2 mbk-f uh, invokes the control file, but you can override the database. So even if your control file in this example is merging the sample database, you can override that with a prod db database. So this control file becomes a template of sort that you don't have to write multiple copies of this control file. You can simply override some 
keywords, like in this case the database, or the message file. The message file was not indicated in this control file, so we're going to indicate it here at the command line. Down here we see an example of merging table spaces, and there are three. This is cat space and TS1 and 2. The colons between them tell merge backup to make one backup output file. If we had to put commas there between them, then that would have indicated three backup files, one for each. And finally, an example of standalone. To invoke standalone, you have to use the minus S option. And the control file here, as you can see, takes a little bit more into account. There isn't anything taken for granted when you do standalone. You want to be able to say where the backups are from, which particular backup image it is, perhaps, the, uh, lo the location of where it's going to be written to, and so on. So when you're running standalone mode, then your control file information may have to be more specific than if you are running it in the normal mode. There are a number of usage scenarios as shown here on this slide. We've had large Wall Street companies use it to wrangle their terabyte, two terabyte to 200 terabyte warehouses where delta and incremental backups can take a long time and they can make this much more manageable with merge backup. We've had a large U.S. insurance company do the same, especially when they are encountered occasional TSM errors and they use merge backup so as to make this process much more simple. And Delta DB was able to better have a strategy to deal with long backup times and large amounts of backup files by using merge backup. And they saw that as their backup strategy and their backups got longer and longer and more complex, merge backup was much more useful as time went on. So that's it for DB2 Merge Backup. I appreciate your time. Again, my name is Bert Vialpondo. I'm an executive IT specialist with IBM. I'd love it if you send me an email at bert.vialpondo at us.ibm.com. In your email, give me feedback, you ask me some questions, whatever you need to. In fact, you could even ask me how to find out how to get a proof of technology in a site near your location. That way you can get Merge Backup hands-on and maybe try the other two advanced recovery solution tools as well. In this way, you can see that Merge Backup will have value for your company.